Hello and welcome to Let's Talk with Bishop R.C. Blakes. R.C. is an author, empowerment teacher, and the proud pastor of the New Home Ministries of New Orleans, Louisiana, and Houston, Texas. His message circles the globe. His conversational and candid approach to challenging content makes him a relevant voice to all generations. Get ready for a life-changing transformational conversation. Hey, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? This is R.C. Blakes, and I am, let me see if I can get this mic out of my face a little bit. I am so excited about um, what we have to talk about today. I need you, honestly, I really need you to uh, light this thing up, invite some others to come in and to be a part of this conversation I was just pondering um, just, you know, a little more deeply. How does a woman determine, you know, without um, even having to necessarily ask questions, how can a woman observe a man and see certain intangible signs that this guy might be the one? Because you have to remember, it's the man's job to pursue. It's the woman's job to approve. Well, you don't want to approve of anything, right? You want to approve of a man that um, is, you know, there's a high probability that this guy has the kind of character and we can really finish the journey together. You don't want to be like a lot of silly women who just choose a man based on he looks good. He talks good. He says he got, has money. He wears fancy clothes and drives drives a shiny car. You got to be able to go deeper. You got to be able to go deeper if you're truly going to be able to stay in your feminine role of approving of a man. Well, you know, as a wise woman, as a virtuous woman, and what is a virtuous woman? It's not a woman. Many times when women hear that, they you think it means it's a woman that's flawless or even virginal. Virtuous woman is not necessarily a virginal woman. She's certainly not a woman that's perfect because none of us are perfect, but she is a woman that protects her value uh, to the highest degree. She goes the extra mile to make certain that she's letting the right people into her life and that she's not, um, you know, just opening her life up to people who never deserve a conversation. So there, there are seven things that I've outlined here that a woman can sit and observe about a man, just, you know, just having interactions with him. There are seven things that I've outlined here that a woman can observe about a man that, that can point to uh, the high probability that this this might be the one. And why do I say might be? It's because, I mean, sometimes you never know what extent people might go to to deceive you. But I think if a guy hits all of these marks, it's not likely that he's going to be uh, deceptive. Because people that are deceptive, if if we're really functioning and operating from the right realm, we discern them sooner or later anyway. You know, if you pay attention to a man's energy, to be quite honest with you, he'll never get to a place where he can abuse you if you just pay attention to his energy. But let me get into this here. Number one, seven signs that a man might be the one when his presence produces for you or produces peace in your spirit. When you're around this man, he literally produces peace in your spirit. I'm not talking about lust in your flesh. I'm not talking about ideas in your, you know, uh, vain mind. But this guy, his presence literally produces peace in your spirit. You know how few women actually test a man for peace? And you know how many women prioritize 
looks and money to the point that they run behind that, knowing the whole while that this guy that looks good and has a whole lot of money maybe does not really give her peace. Because nobody really ever set you down to tell you that the number one thing a man should bring into your life is peace. He should bring a sense of security. In my book, The Father-Daughter Talk, uh, I had the privilege uh, a week or so ago to go and talk to some young teen girls. I think they were aged from 12 to 17, 12 to 18. And uh, man, they just sat there and looked at me, but I literally sat there and taught them the things that every father should teach his daughter. And one of the things I taught them was that you should never tolerate a man that makes you afraid. It's because one of the first things the right man is going to produce in a woman's life is peace. A woman should always feel for the level of peace a man's presence gives her because energy never lies. Energy never lies. And Lisa and I have never talked about this, but you know, Lisa had had, she, she never had an experience really, um, or maybe I should say not many experiences in her life where she could fully trust a man. And so when she and I got together, I'm certain that she had to feel because she was engineered to reject, you know, anything that did not bring her peace. So I'm certain that she had to feel a sense of peace in my presence. If, if, if a man does not bring you peace, you know what that is? That is God saying to you, run, run, run. If, if you're around a man or around a person for that matter, and for some reason there's an uneasiness in your spirit that is God saying to you, disconnect. You don't need to sit around trying to figure out why. That You don't need to figure out why, because if you figure out why, it means that you have more than likely been injured or worse. When there's no peace in your spirit around a man, that is God saying to you, run. Peace is the clearest sign of God's endorsement on anything. If you go to Colossians chapter 3 and verse 15 in the Amplified Version, it reads like this, let the peace of Christ, the inner calm of one who walks daily with him, be the controlling factor in your hearts, deciding and settling questions that arise. To this peace, indeed, you were called as members in one body of believers and be thankful to God always. So he says, let the peace of Christ, that inner calm that a person has that walks with Christ on a daily, be the controlling factor in your hearts, deciding and settling questions that arise. If you want to know if something is of God, from God, for you or not, check your peace level. If, if you don't feel a peace about it, you should always search. I heard this stated. I wish it were my statement, but it's not. But I think it's amazing. I've paraphrased it a little bit. You should always search for the person that gives you greater peace than your own solitude does. In other words, if you're not giving me more peace than I have by myself, if, if being with you causes my peace level to, to drop, I don't need you because the person that is going to be right for my life is the, 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 the woman or the man that when I get around you, I feel an even greater sense of security, even a greater sense of peace. I think that's the thing that, you know, I love most about, um, about, uh, my wife, about Lisa. It's, you know, I don't like necessarily, I don't like being without her. I really don't. 
Now I, I can function and be without her. Like, you know, like I'm not with her presently and I travel without her and I do all of those. I am a functional, in, functional individual. But the reality is I'm more at peace when I'm around her. And there, there are very few people in life that you can honestly say when I'm around this person, I'm more at peace. That's why I think most people love their mothers so much is because when you get around your mom, it's like, you know, you're even more at peace. There's a greater sense of security. And in some cases, you know, we have great fathers that provide that same sense. But if you are happier and more relaxed by yourself, why sacrifice that value for another person? Right relationships add to you. And more specifically, the right man is always going to produce for you a greater peace. You're, you're supposed to always be able to exhale and whoo, relax when you are around the right man. Now, that means that you're going to have to, well, let me not say that because I don't need y'all, I don't need nobody going on for me. Go to Deuteronomy 24 and 5 in the Amplified. Speaking of a, of a man that would be a husband, it says, when a man takes a new wife, he shall not go out to fight with the army nor be charged with any duty. He shall be free at home for one year and shall bring happiness to his wife whom he has taken. Now, that doesn't mean that he's going to be around there like a little simp. You know, just jumping around, you know, what you want, dear, what you want, dear, what you want, dear. Man does serve his wife. I serve my wife. And I ask her quite often, what do you need, sweetheart? What do you need? What do you want? What you need? That's but it's not talking about a man being a simp. What it's talking about, a man that would be a husband is so locked in and has so prioritized this woman that he wants to know everything it takes to please her, not only sexually. But he wants to know what does it take to keep her in a calm state because for, 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 watch this, for him to get the best value out of his woman, it means that he's going to have to facilitate helping her to stay in her feminine. And the only way to help her stay in her feminine is to learn how to, ex, you know, accent her happiness, her peace, because a healthy relationship makes you better emotionally and spiritually. Does that make sense to you? Now, number two, number two, um, what was the question? Oh, what, what's the statement, rather? Seven signs that a, a, a man might be the one, seven intangible signs that a man might be the one. When his presence produces peace in your spirit. Number two, when his pursuit of his personal purpose intrigues you. You see, these are things that you can observe without having deep conversations. You ain't got, you know, you, you can just watch and pay attention. You just got to be on that level where you're thinking, where you're so queen conscious that you know what to look for. When a man's pursuit of his personal purpose intrigues you, he may very well be the one. Because a healthy relationship with a man that is going to be suitable for you is also e exciting and intriguing. Therefore, his personal goals and his vision are intriguing. One of the most attractive things about a man is when a man has a vision and you can see him in pursuit of that vision. When a man says, this is where I'm going, and you see him moving in that direction every day, it's one of the most, I, I believe, well, I've been told, I've been told, should I say, I ain't never been no woman, but I've been told by, by women who have great men that one of the most attractive things about their men was the fact that these guys articulated their goals, worked for their goals, manifested their goals, and then created new goals. When the, when, when the man's pursuit of his personal purpose intrigues you, you may have a man there that's deep enough to actually hold your attention. If you go to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18, it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And he was talking about who? Eve. He was talking about the woman. So when you, when you think about how 
a woman that would be a wife is engineered to, you know, connect to a man that would be a husband, um, the, the wife is trying to locate her assignment in that man's life based on his present passions and pursuits. So as, 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 as a would-be wife, you're, you're trying to figure out now, where am I supposed to help this guy at? Because one of the main agendas of a wife is to be able to fit into a place in her husband's life where she can help him. Now, if he ain't doing nothing, he don't need no help. So I don't care how fine he is. I don't care, you know, what your body's saying. If if he, if he's not doing anything, if if he has no pursuits that intrigue you, if his life is not really going to a level where he would need your assistance, I dare say he's probably a man that won't be able to really, really hold your attention very long. Because you're going to have to be able to locate your assignment in the man's life based on his present passions and pursuits. Any man that is excited about his own purpose will be better suited. Watch this. This is another reason you, you should observe to see if you're intrigued by this man's pursuit of purpose and, and passion and vision. Because any man that is excited about his own purpose will be better suited to understand your excitement about yours. A man that is a visionary is a man that will best relate to a woman that is a visionary. And the two do what? Bring their, merge their visions together and the two help one another and aid and assist one another. But if you're a visionary woman trying to connect to a man that doesn't have a vision, you're going to waste time and possibly your whole life trying to get this man to buy into who you are. But when you are a visionary woman and you see a man that is a visionary guy and the two of you bring that together, there's nothing more out of balance than to join a visionary woman to a sedentary man. It takes a visionary man to appreciate a visionary woman. Now, one of the most prolific women in scripture, that's the, the, the virtuous woman, the Proverbs 31 woman, one of the most prolific women in scripture, she was a, a, a wife, a mother, a boss. She was um, a landowner. She bought land. She made deals. She took care of the poor. Woman was prolific, many different things. But she also had a husband who was at least equally accomplished. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 31, 23. Her husband, speaking of the Proverbs 31 woman, is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. That means her husband sat with all of the, the, the shot callers. Come on, somebody. He was with the big wigs. He was a baller, in other words. And he had a wife that was a baller. Well, it, it, it took that kind of man to be able to accommodate that kind of woman. You see, if, if, if you want to know if a guy is likely to be the one, check out how exciting his personal pursuit of his vision is. Just observe quietly how this dude is on his grind and getting it and, and making things happen. Wow. You know, I believe this is why the Queen of Sheba was so attracted to Solomon. Two of a kind, equally yoked. But how often are women trying to make situations work, you know, with, with you, 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 you have a vision for the penthouse, the penthouse, but you know, you, you've fallen in love, falling in, in, you know, indicating possible possibility of injury or death, indicating mistake. You've fallen in love. 
You have vision for the penthouse, but you've fallen in love with a man that only has basement capacity. I pause right there because you need to think about what I just said. Oh, I know he's fine, and I know he got a good rap and all of that, and I know he's good in the bed, but where's all of that going? You have you have penthouse vision, but now you've fallen in love and you can't get up from a man that has only basement capacity. So if, if you want to know if a guy is, you know, possibly, likely, potentially the one, you know, check out his pursuit of personal purpose and see how excited you are about his purpose, because that's going to indicate that he has the capacity to accommodate you. And it's also going to indicate that you have a real role to play in his life. And every woman wants to know that she has a necessary role in the successes of her man's life. Every woman, if you really love a man, now if you don't really love a man, you could care less. But if you really love a man, you got to know that you have a significant role that nobody else can play in that man's success. Well, if you got a man that ain't doing nothing, I mean, you know, you, you may be satisfied for a little while while the sex is good or whatever, but that ain't going to last till you start having babies and your body change and everybody start getting older. As you get older, it's your man's vision that becomes most attractive. Come on, somebody. Now, number three, how do you know uh, if this brother might be the one? Uh, what, do, what do you observe? When they are consistent after significant time. Some of y'all say, oh, oh he's been consistent. How long you been with him? Two weeks. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. <laughs> Come on, baby. A brother can wait you out, you know, much longer than that. You got to slow down, first of all, and stop being in a rush to just give all your virtue away and learn to make dudes wait. Because when a man is choosing a wife, he's looking for a woman that's going to make him wait for certain things. A lot of y'all, you know, have amazing qualities and you are wives, but because you didn't know it in your own mind, you met guys that would have been great husbands, but you gave up too much too fast, and he, he checked you off of the list, the wife list, because the wife is the woman that makes a man wait for certain things. And the woman, the man proves himself to the, the man proves himself to be a husband when he's consistent after considerable amounts of time. The woman proves herself to be a wife by saying, you got to wait for that. The man proves himself a husband to wait consistently and patiently. A healthy relationship is stable and safe. And a wise woman slows everything down and gives it time. Because a safe man is patient and consistent. Any man trying to rush you into it, trying to rush you into the bed, trying to rush you into this, trying to rush you into that. You know, you, you sitting out with this dude and he 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 drinking and he he wanna, you know, he he wants you to drink with him. He ordering drinks for you. Don't even ask you if you want the drink. He gonna order the drink for you, and gonna almost try to force feed you the drink, and then he just rushing, he talking fast, he moving fast. Come on, man. A safe man is patient and consistent. A safe man is patient, inquisitive, and consistent. He's not a man that's in a hurry. He's a man that understands value. He's not a man that's in a rush. He understands that this is a marathon. Great relationships are a marathon, not a sprint. He's not, he's not looking for, you know, a hundred yard dash. No, 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 no. This, this is a marathon. In Proverbs 10 and 9, it says, whoever walks in integrity walks securely. But whoever takes crooked paths will be found out. When a person is walking in their integrity, they ain't got nothing to hide. They can look you in the eye. They got the same answer for you the fifth time you asked the question that they had the first time. Come on, somebody. They're consistent 
They're the same person. Their energy doesn't shift unless they had some traumatic event that happened, you know, that particular day. The the energy may be thrown off. But for the most part, all things being equal, their energy is consistent. Their answers are consistent. Their behavior is consistent. I mean, you can watch them, you know, you, you can just see it. But you see, when you when you're desperate as a woman, when you become desperate for a relationship, what happens is your your eyes get blinded to things that should have been obvious. And you get in a rush and you 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 no longer prove things through time. You see, it just ain't no way in the world you're supposed to be. You may not buy into, you know, what I believe, because you know I'm a pastor and I'm a Christian. Uh, and I understand, you know, I understand real life. I do understand, I understand the biblical ideal. And then I understand real life, I understand what God ideally wants for us. And I understand real life. I mean, very few of us hit that biblical ideal, but even if you don't subscribe to the biblical ideal of, you know, withholding sex until marriage, uh, you, you know, come on, man, you can't let a dude go and buy you a shrimp dinner on the third date. And, the, and you and your mind trying to figure out, should you give this dude your body for a shrimp? Come on, man. I don't care if it's, I don't care if it's a steak. I don't care what it is. You, you gotta, you gotta observe this guy. You haven't been with this guy long enough. And then you're all out here, you know, you out here just giving your bodies to these cats, man. And you ain't got no blood work. If, if I were a woman, if I were thinking about having a sexual relationship with a man, he going to at least wait till we go d- down to see the people to get that blood work. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm just saying I'm going to at least make him wait long enough to let him have, you know, s- some some narcissistic episodes so I can see what I'm working with here. Come on now. But y'all rushing and you, you're getting all of these soul ties. You're getting entangled with all of these these different kinds of people because you you never gave it time for this gentleman (laughs) to prove himself consistent. Anybody can put up a great act. There's no greater actor than a narcissist. A narcissist can be exactly what you think you desire until they get their hooks in you and then the fangs come out. Then the the, the mask comes off because, and what's going on there? You didn't wait. And then it's after you, you've you had babies for this person. They've given you all kinds of STDs, you know, wrecked your life, traumatized you emotionally that now you can say he, he, he was a narcissist. Well, if you had given it the kind of time for this guy to prove consistency, you would have begun to see glimpses of that. And you would have been able to discern that this is where it was going anyway. So a woman does herself a major disservice by chasing, because if you're chasing, you ain't waiting on nothing. You're just accepting whatever you catch. And most of what you catch is going to devour you. But but back to my point, when they are consistent after time, when a man is just, he's showing up and he's consistent, he's consistent, he's consistent, he's consistent. Now, here's the problem. Here's the problem with that. You're going to have to be a whole and healthy woman um, emotionally because a consistent man today in today's culture is not as attractive as an unpredictable man. See, a man that's inconsistent, unpredictable, all over the radar and and a woman can't peg him for some reason, broken consciousness, the broken consciousness of this generation of women makes that man very attractive, while a man that is consistent and dependable uh, is deemed unattractive and boring. See, so you're going to have to make certain that you are whole and healthy as a woman, you know, because if not, you won't even be able to appreciate a consistent man. I was watching this thing that, that's going around on Instagram about it, it. It said one thing says, well, I forget exactly how it says, but I'll just paraphrase it. Here's, here's the voice of the guy that, um, you know, a healthy guy. 
he, he calls you in the morning. He says, hello, sweetheart. Hope you're having a great day. Da, 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 da. And he shows a woman like in disgust. Like, oh. Then, then it, shifts to, it shifts to unhealthy guy. You know, wake your blankety blank up. And she gets up giggling and happy. Well, that, I mean, I don't see nothing cute about that. That, that is just the demonstration of how broken consciousness has taken over and how women may not even always be equipped to recognize husband material when it's right up in their faces. Now, um, number four, number four, number four. How do you know that this guy might be the one? Might be the one. Remember, remember the dude has to pursue, you have to prove. How, how do you know this guy might be the one that I can approve of as a woman? When the conversation and focus is on an improved future, going back to vision, you, you, you know, you, you see his personal vision and his grind, but as the relationship develops and as the relationship goes and grows, the conversation, um, you know, is, is not all about how fine you are and what I want to do to you. And, oh, if I can just get you and I'll do this to you and I know how to do that. And I read the Kama Sutra and all of this kind of BS, man. The conversation and focus is on an improved future. Any man that wants to have lengthy conversations with you about the future is a man you, you should give some attention to at least. Because if a man does not have a vision for a better future, he does not have a sufficient love for you as a woman. If all a man's talking about your body and getting you in the bed and sexing you up, Mm -mm. That ain't no husband conversation. That ain't that ain't no husband. That ain't that ain't really even no no serious man conversation. Because if a man is serious about you, and he wants to be exclusive with you, he not gonna just be around here talking about sexing you up and getting you in the bed and and what he can do to you and all that. His conversation is going to move more towards your aspirations and dreams. And when he gets to a point where he's really thinking about can this go to distance. He begins to have conversations about an improved future, how we can grow together, how we can build together. He's not trying to get you to, you know, invest in him. No, no, he's, he's, he's talking to you about this, what I'm doing, this, what you're doing. How can we merge and build together? When a man loves a woman, he immediately begins to strategize for her future. His conversation is about the future. You know, when um, when Lisa and I um, were dating, I had a little bitty house. I mean, a little tiny house, a house so small that you could knock on my front door. I could answer you from my bedroom without ever having to get out the bed. And, you know, that, that's the little house where I'd, I'd been a bachelor at. So we got, when we made up our minds that, you know, I asked her to marry me, we got to that point where I asked her to marry me. I said, no, you know, we got we to gotta go get us a family house now, you know. and we go. So I, I sold my little house and I made some money off of it. And then we took that money and we bought a larger house that we would start having our kids in. And that was our house because when a man is serious, the conversation focuses on shifts to an improved future. I didn't want to bring her into that little house where I had been a bachelor. I wanted her to have another kind of house because the love I had for her said, I want to create the best life and future for this woman I possibly can create. And when a man is serious and he might be the one, listen to his conversation. His conversation focuses on an improved future. If, if, if you're hanging out with a man, sleeping with a man, and he's never talking about the future and how we can improve the future and what, he's, what his plans are, what he's going to do, how he's going to go and make these monies so that he can come back. Come on, somebody. Listen to what the Bible says in Proverbs 13, 22. A good man 
leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. What is that telling you? A good man is focused so much on the future that he's thinking about his grandchildren. He's not only thinking about his wife, he's thinking about his children, and he's thinking about his grandchildren. A man is just playing, he's just thinking about tonight. Now, because a healthy relationship um, is inspirational, and a man that is not pressing for, you know, a better future lacks vision. And a man without a vision will always default to his past and never make room for a woman. See, a man has to have a vision to even make room for you. If a man doesn't have a vision, you go to ask him questions like, well, you know, where are we going to live? And he ain't got no answers for that. What are we going to drive? How are we going to educate our children? You know, uh, how many kids are we going to have? How are we going to take care? And he ain't got no answers for that. It means that there's not been a lot of thought put into this relationship because, and, and if there's not been a lot of thought put into the future of this relationship, there's a lack of love. Because when a man loves a woman, his first mind is, now how am I going to take care of this woman? How am I going to provide for this woman? No real man wants to take a woman from her father and bring her down. Every real man wants to bring a woman up if possible. And the Bible says in Proverbs 29 and 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. In other words, if a man doesn't have a vision, he's all over the place. He's unrestrained. He's just all over the place. He's in it today. He's out of it tomorrow, you know, uh, because he lacks vision. But when, when a man may be considered as the one, you hear it in his conversation. The conversation and focus is on an improved future. How am I going to make your life better? Now, number five, and these are things, again, that you can observe without even you know, anybody knowing that you're observing this. And if you don't see these things in your present situation, um, you know, yeah. Number five, when you can learn things from him. When you can learn things from him. Any healthy relationship is educational. A woman has to have the benefit of feeling like her man can teach her something. How are you going to respect what he's saying if you don't feel like the dude knows anything? And why would you accept a man, you know, to, to fulfill the role of being your man that has nothing to contribute intellectually? Are you that shallow that you're just going to accept a man maybe because he, you know, he's good in bed? And, and, and a dummy don't, can't, you know, there's nothing he says that you can respect or or learn anything from. What's going to happen when y'all get old and you, you, ain't, you don't have the energy to be bouncing up and down and doing all that? Hmm? What you going to do then? When, 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 when the, the relationship is going to have to be glued together by the conversation and, and homie has none. You, you got to pay attention. Is this dude, doesn't mean that he has to be as educated. In, in a lot of cases, women are more educated than guys. You, you know what I mean? But, you know, education and intellect are two different things. It, it does mean he has to have, he got to have some firing off of there that gives him some thoughts that, you know, at least help you to see it from a different perspective, or he has to be able to add something to the conversation. Last thing you want is to be with a man that you 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 look over the last two, three years y'all been together and you learn nothing from him. You've learned nothing from him. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3 and 7, likewise, ye husbands dwell with them, the wives, according to knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Why does he say? Dwell with them according to knowledge. It's because any woman that is actually wife material is going to have a lot of questions. And you cannot be a man talking about submit to me and you can't answer no questions. But how many women 
are settling for men that can't answer questions. But they know what to do when they get you between those sheets. And your mind is just, uh, you just, you just, you just, uh. <laughs> you just out there, hon. You just out there. Boy, dumb as a box of rocks. Dumb as a box of rocks. Now, number six. Uh, this guy willingly um, volunteers information. Guy that would be uh, possible thumbs up is a guy that you, you ain't you ain't you don't have to just you know dig and search for information. He volunteers information. You know, you, you call, you tell you. I'm over here, um, you know. If you, if you need me, this is where I'm at. If uh, I don't hear my phone ringing, here's a here's the landline. You can reach me here. You know, he, he volunteers information. You know, he he has a he has a system where he has voluntary accountability. You ain't got to search because he's putting putting it all on the table for you. He has he has what we call transparent honesty. It is the prerequisite to trust. Transparent honesty is the prerequisite to trust when when a when a woman or a man lives with a whole lot of secrets and covering stuff up and, and you know you can't build trust with a person like that because trust is not something you give to a man it's something that a man earns from you and the way he earns it is he volunteers information a man that would be potentially the one will be an open book He'll be an open book, nothing to hide, nothing to hide. He ain't running away from no no, no pictures y'all try. You trying to take for the Instagram? He all up in there because he ain't got no woman. He ain't, he ain't got all. Okay, let me leave that alone. Let me leave. Second Corinthians chapter eight verse twenty one. For we have regard for what is honorable and above suspicion. Ab honorable and what? above suspicion, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. In other words, we live our lives in a way that's transparent and honest, that we might live above suspicion. We, we in other words, we are volunteering all information. We, we are living our lives as an open book. When a man is trustworthy, he is intentional about demonstrating it before it is required. When a man is trustworthy, he is intentional about demonstrating it before it is required. See, this is an indication of the man being emotionally intelligent intelligent enough to handle the woman's heart any 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 man that just he just you know just got half his wits about him knows that one of the things that's a big issue for the woman is can she trust me so a wise man he puts it all on the table before she ever has to ask for it that's his emotional intelligence kicking in and every woman needs to know that there are no secrets or agendas before she can fully and completely and wholly relax in her total femininity. Now, number seven and I'm done. Number seven and I'm done. What, what does this guy look like? This guy that, um, you know, might very well be the one. Let's, well, let me just give you number seven. You're going to find that there's the absence of ego. The absence of ego, the clearest evidence of a maximized masculinity is a minimized ego. An egotistical man has maturing to do. He's not husband material. Because ego has to be fed. 
and, and and it's like keeping a wild animal if it if it gets hungry enough it may very well devour the one that loves it now you know keeping all things balanced every woman should sufficiently feed her man's ego knowing that that's a need in men but if a man is all about ego and if his ego is on full display he 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 walks with ego chips on his shoulders he ain't the one he's he's a project he ain't ready to be nobody's he's not ready to be anybody's husband because that ego is going to require you know constant admiration is probably going to uh probably venture into having to have more than one sexual partner to feel like he's worthy and all of that you need a man that has tamed and secured his own ego you you don't need a man that is full of ego watch a brother if a brother can't you know um if if you can't say something to a brother that may not be in total agreement with him without him uh, blowing up and, and huffing and puffing and getting angry. You know, uh, if, if, if you see a, a, a coworker in the street, that's a male and you can't stop and say hello. Oh my goodness, Lord Jesus, my God. Uh, you got issues right there. You know, man that can't accept no overconfident in things they've not even studied. You got, you got ego going wild here, easily infuriated if they feel disrespected without even getting an understanding of what the other person might have meant or intended, incapable of being empathetic at times, self-consumed. Man, you don't, you, 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 you got to pay attention because the brother that would make for the right one is not a weak brother. He's a meek brother. What's the difference between weakness versus meekness? Weakness is one lacks strength. Meekness is one has the strength, but has the mind to put that to the background. It's strength under control. You don't need a, you don't need a brother that's egotistical. So you got to pay attention to see if this brother is overdosing on his own ego or not. And, um, hey, man, you know, this. let me give you this, and then I promise you I'm done. How to compliment this type of man. Those are seven things. How do you comp? If you meet this guy, I haven't developed this, but I'll give it to you, even though it's not developed. Maybe we'll come back, create a whole conversation about this. How does, how does, this, how does this woman compliment this kind of guy? If you've got a guy that's hitting all of these marks, how do you compliment him? Respect him. And never take him being a gentleman as weakness. Number two, return the positive, honest, and progressive energy back to him. Just like you want him to be that kind of man, you should mirror that in being that kind of woman. Number three, don't bring drama into his equation because a man that lives his life like this is a man that has a high need and prioritizes peace. He's not going to settle with a woman that is bringing drama into his peaceful life. If a brother brings you peace, don't bring him drama. Don't even bring your friends around that might bring drama. And then number four, recognize his value. Don't take him for granted. Recognize his value. Appreciate his value you know, consider his value. Let him know you see his value. You know, when the time is right, let him know you see his value. Give him credit. So my prayer is that you've gotten something out of this. I pray that our little conversation today has been helpful. I want to pray for you before I let you go. Father, I thank you for every person, male and female, that might be watching. And I thank you, God, for the wisdom that transcends race and country and ethnicity and religions. God, I thank you that you're, you're speaking to all of us on our level, in our way. And now, God, my prayers for every woman that's praying about maybe certain prospects. Give them divine, supernatural wisdom to know, not to guess, but to know. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Now, listen, I need you to go to my website, 
Check out all of my online programs, Transcending the Father Wound, Queenology, Soul Ties. Um, look at, um, make sure you sign up while you're there. Make certain that you sign up for my mailing list. Go to Amazon, check out all of my books. Buy, you know, support. I was reading emails almost every day where people are reading my books in it. I mean, it's just amazing to be able to communicate in that fashion. And uh, of course, if you need counseling, if there's a link in the description for better help counseling, if you engage that link, it will afford you 10% off of the cost of better help uh, and their counseling. Uh, they'll, 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 give you 10% off and they'll make, they will make a deposit into RC Blake's ministries for my referring them. Now, uh, thank you for all of you that have sown into our lives. Lisa and I love you and we appreciate you. Uh, but now I think I'm done for, for the moment. And until next time, just know that I'm RC Blake's junior and you're on top and you're going high. Your God has more in store for you. So we, Lisa and I will see you at the top. God bless you until next time. We here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you for spending this time with us today. R.C. and Lisa are always honored to have you with us. Don't forget to reach out to us by visiting our website at www.rcblakes.com. While you're there, you may join our mailing list and receive a free download of the Laws of Manifesting Your Vision by R.C. Blakes. Also look at all of the online programs by R.C. You may find all books written by R.C. and Lisa. Once again, all of us here at R.C. Blake's Ministries want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And as we always say, see you at the top.
still in calm Snowflakes dancing silver light Like whispers in a song Through the window frosty panes A quiet glow remains Echoes of a soft refrain Where only silence reigns But in the cold and lonely dark A sound begins to play A melody that sparks the night That sweeps the cold away Oh, the sound of winter serenade A symphony so sweet Six strings of love and dreams convey where hearts and coldest me Every note a star above in the sky so deep and wide The song of winter's tender love in the night we can fly Soft and warm, playing through the quiet stars, a shelter.